In this video, I'll be talking about correcting the past. Now, I'm not talking about changing the past because that's not possible for any of us to do. Okay? Things that happened, happened. So I'm not talking about that. With correcting the past, I'm talking about examining the context of the present, how the present turned into what it is. That means you need to have some historical knowledge. But the reason you gain historical knowledge is not to, uh, let me say, to avoid the present, but it's to understand the present so you can process the past so you're freed from it. It's the same as driving in a car or on a motorcycle. You have those mirrors at your side so you can reflect on what's behind you. Because if you're on a motorcycle and there is this car coming up, coming be uh, from behind you with a high speed, and let's say the driver is drunk, if, you have, if your mirrors are on your motorcycle, your brain will capture um, the reflection of those mirrors, and when your brain captures danger, your attention is drawn towards one of the mirrors, and you can say, oh dear, I need to move to the, to the side now. Those side mirrors are there for your safety, so that you can function properly on the road. The same with cars. Well, the same it is with reflecting on the past. I'm talking about looking back. Okay, there's a difference between reflecting back and looking back. You reflect on the past because you're moving forward. People that l look back are folks that want to escape the present. So they actually don't want to change. Now look, let me give an example. Let's say you have a community where it was the norm to, how would I say, to hate your children when they didn't do what you want. And people just accepted it, and that's the norm. Uh, your parents, you should be a bit afraid of them. So there's fear between uh, parents and children. So let's say this is the norm in the community. It's been like that for about 300 years. And in the 301st year, one of the people from that community um, uh, begins a sexual relationship with someone outside of the community. And she now marries this guy from another ethnicity. And when they have um, children, she begins to smack the children when the children are like two years old. And her husband is thinking, dear, what are you doing? And she said, uh, darling, she doesn't want to listen, so I have to put her in her place. And then the husband's thinking, are you out of your mind? That's a two-year-old. They can barely walk properly, and now you want to hit them? I mean, come on. What's wrong with you? It's then that this woman received a wake-up call from her husband, and the wake-up call came in a very unpleasant, you can even say a rude manner. Her husband was so shocked that he even called the mental asylum to pick up his wife. Because the husband was so shocked that she, a grown woman, was was beating a two-year-old. And when, after five years, when the behavior still didn't change, he filed for divorce. And the judge um, shows the side of the husband. Because the judge, as well as the other people in the courtroom, even the lawyer of that woman, agreed with the, with the husband that it's inappropriate to use physical force on a tiny human being that has no other options. But this woman, who lost custody of her children, she didn't have to go to jail for child abuse because um, they considered her background. Actually, should have gone to jail, but she, she didn't. It's like two or three years after she lost custody of her children, and her ex-husband moved on, he remarried, that she realized that something wasn't right with her way of thinking. And it's then, when she was in therapy, that she reflected on her own childhood, and she also reflected on her own relatives and the people from her background, and she realized that it's the norm for adults to dump their anger on 
younger ones. And when she began to look at that character, she realized that within her community, there's a lot of crime. A lot of gun violence also. And then she, she realized what's going on. Those children were traumatized through physical and also emotional violence or psychological violence. And when they were older, this uh, trauma worked out in them being way too sensitive and this oversensitive um, defect in their mind caused explosive conflicts that led to either homicide or domestic violence. So she was part of that cycle, whether she was aware of it or not. Her, hus her ex-husband did his best to change her mind, but he sh the husband eventually realized that he was not able to change her mind, so he re realized that he had to choose for his children. So the husband, or let's say the ex-husband, chose to put the children in safety and to divorce her. And he did it the right way, so he wouldn't face too much uh, delay, uh, too much delay in the divorce process, because he realized that this wo woman that he was married to was dangerous to the children, even dangerous unto him. So, in this case, you have someone that came from a community where domestic violence against children was accepted. Nobody challenged it. If she would have married or, or hung out with people from the same community, there, there was a collective agreement. So they would have agreed on hitting children, so there wouldn't, there wouldn't have been much conflict about the matter. But now that she got involved with someone who was n not part of that uh, destructive cycle, that other individual was freed. I don't say that other individual never was never part of such a domestic violence cycle. He looked at the situation and saw it right what it was. Well, that woman, because she was partly traumatized, but also attached to her background, she didn't want to face that not only was she wrong, but that she also was damaged and that she was defective. She didn't want to face all of this, so she wasn't willing to receive help. So she just wanted relief from the dysfunction. And this relief came in the form of dumping on the children and sometimes even on her husband. Now in this case, the husband made the right choice to avoid danger and also to secure the safety of his children. Now, in this case, the past was not corrected. In this case, the parents of that woman did not reflect on themselves nor on their ancestors. They didn't see things in perspective and it didn't, and they didn't recognize the defects they've inherited. You, you don't choose where you're born, okay? You have no choice. So where you grow up, the native language you speak, you don't have any choice. But once you become a bit older, let's say in your mid-teenage years, you now have options. And because you have options, you ought to examine things and go for safety. In this case, the parents of this woman did not go for safety, they just want to get along with the community. Now she decided that she wanted more than just being around her own folks. That was a step. But the next step was to seek help and to process the past. Not just her past that she experienced, she would be also the past of her community, of her ancestors. She didn't want to do it. So she was extending the cycle towards, to, uh, let's say, to the next generation. But her partner said, no, it's not going to happen. So correcting the past is about processing the past while you're moving forward. Because it's only when you're moving forward, when you're moving forward, you can process the past. If a car stands still, there's no use for the side mirrors, right? Because those mirrors are meant for when you're, you're driving on the road. So when you're moving forward in your car, it's then that you need those side mirrors. If the car is just standing still, you don't need any side mirrors. The same way it is with life. You need to reflect on the past because this, the historical reflection is a tool in your moving forward. So only people that are moving forward can properly reflect on the past. Those that are standing still, those that are in stagnation, can't properly process the past because they are part of the past. They are part of the paths and cycles that are extending themselves into the future. 
So how can they reflect on those patterns and cycles if they are part of those patterns and cycles? No, they ought to be free from those patterns and cycles. So they can process the context so that they will never repeat or extend those generational curses. However, you will face resistance when you process the past. Because think about it. If you have grown men and grown women, so if, I'm talking about adults now, especially people that are older than 30, they never looked at the bigger picture, they never reflected on the past, they just got caught along. So they never actually took responsibility. And let's say now you are 15 year old or a 20 year old and you realize, uh-uh, the way these people function is not correct. You, you don't have a black and white thinking, say they're all bad people. No, but you realize that they have this function that needs to be addressed. And you realize that they don't want to face this function. So you, um, you keep them at a distance because you don't want to be involved with a destructive cycle. And they now, because they see you looking for solutions, it reflects back onto them. And then they will feel bad, feel bad about themselves because they never sought for solution, never strike for any solutions. Instead of facing this painful fact about themselves, they now will project this pain onto you and then they will blame you and accuse you and sometimes even attack you so they are relieved from self-reflection. Because self-reflection is too painful for them, but instead of going through the pain and eventually be delivered, they want relief from it by dumping on you. So you will have relatives, aunties, uncles, um, grandparents, or cousins, or people, or maybe children, grandchildren, no, maybe grandchildren, maybe not, but okay, but you will have people that simply refuse change. Even if that change is for the better. Now you have change for the worse. Okay. Now it's reasonable and even expected of people to resist change for the worse. For example, if you have, um, if you have a, a, a village, not even if you, if you have a town where the leaders are a bit corrupt, of course we may be against it, but let's say now that those politicians are kicked out and now the mafia directly takes over with their drug trade, their drug money. Now this is a change for the worse. Now, it would be reasonable, even expected, and it's even justified when people resist a change for the worse. But what if there's change for the better, the better of everyone? It's if you, could, you could even say it's a natural human obligation for them to embrace change for the better, and it is. But don't you know that you have a lot of folks that hate change, whether it's for worse or for bad, or for good, I mean, whether it's for worse or for good, they just hate change because they don't want to be challenged. They just want to remain relieved and they don't want to make effort for anything. You have such people. Don't break your neck. Neither sacrifice your mental health reaching out to such people. Don't. I'm telling you don't. You can't change them. You can't. It's not possible. It's not in your ability to change them. So don't even try to be wasting your effort. They need to face the reality and they need to face the pattern cycles and they need to realize that they need deliverance and it's their obligation not just responsibilities their obligation to to comply with justice to comply with safety the moment people don't want to change they don't want to move they don't want to make any natural effort they choose to go against safety it's bigger than just them refusing something or rejecting something. They are complying with injustice because they're enabling danger. They're enabling conflicts. They're extending demonic patterns. So they must forfeit that narcissistic attitude. There's not something you can do for them. You can't. So don't ever try to change people for the better. What you should do is have a dominant influence on other people and eventually there will be people breaking under your good influence and them breaking on your good influence is for the better because once they've broken once they're broken down 
in their pride, they will forfeit their pride and they will receive better. That can happen, but not that you, by your own effort and understanding, can change people. Don't think about it. It's not going to happen. Okay? It will never happen. Let it get through to you. Correcting the past is important. Because when the younger, or when the new generation does not correct um, the errors of their ancestors, they are doomed to repeat those errors. They are doomed to extend the curses. And about this thing called respect, it's simply fearful validation. That's what it comes down to. I'm just saying it as it is. This clinging for validation that world people have, that is what keeps them in destruction. Why? Because if they would just stop seeking validation, they would realize that they are the fact. And if they realize they are the fact, they would realize they need a backup and eventually realize that it's Christ that they need. And once someone admits they are the fact and they need help, the Holy Spirit is very close to assist them. The Holy Spirit is dedicated to lead all those open to, to solutions to safety. But a lot of folks just are not interested in solutions. Because solutions imply change. Because if there is a conflict or there is a problem and, and, and you want a solution, it means that the conflict needs to disappear. But if people are attached to the conflict because their validation comes from the conflict, then they don't want solutions. For example, if you have a country there's a fight between conservatives and liberals, and there's a fight between the two, if you identify as a liberal or you identify as a conservative, then that validation, that belongingness that you have to either of those sides is only valid because there's a conflict. If the conflict is over, it means that liberals and conservatives need to forfeit their unnecessary differences and need to comply in unity. But to comply in unity means that there is no division anymore. So your investment and your identity is based on separation. So when separation is gone, because there's a solution, that means that you need to reinvent yourself. It means you need to reinvent your relationships. A lot of folks don't want to go through this. So when it comes down to it, a lot of folks just don't want peace. They don't want solutions. They don't even want safety. Even safety can be a threat to their self-validation. You get it? So correcting the past is important. That's something everyone has to do. Now, correct the past is about you being delivered and changing your mind for the better. Correct the past is not making others forfeit their, dysfunction, their dysfunctional ways, nor, their nor, their, nor to forfeit their malfunction. It's not about, because as I mentioned before, you can't do that. You can only... Decide for yourself to forfeit the, the dysfunctional ways of your ancestors. Now, you can decide to have a good influence on others. You can decide to um, advocate for improvement. But it's those other people that need to forfeit the dysfunction because the dysfunction only continues because you have those that hold, that in, enact it and enable it. Does this mean now that you agree with people remaining in dysfunction? No. They don't have the right to participate in, in injustice. They don't. It's their natural human obligation to comply with justice, to comply with safety, and, and to comply with improvement for, for, for the bigger whole, both for themselves and for the community. If they remain, if they keep sinning because they persist in relief seeking, then you keep them at a distance while you continue in the better. If they don't want to see the bad for what it is bad, if they keep perceiving the bad as good, it is because they've become it's, they've become delusional. And I, I've, I've told you guys before, delusional people are dangerous people. When delusional people are frustrated, people will die most of the time. When they explode, people get hurt. So, I agree with Christ. Because it's by agreeing with him that you can that you will have perspective on the situation. It's then 
should, should be able to process the past properly while moving forward. Because only when you're moving forward that you can process the past. That's it for now. Keep agreeing with Christ and be at peace.